So to, to start, my name is Mike Harris. Uh, I'm an assistant director at the Career Center. Uh, I support uh, mostly engineering and physical sciences students, but I'm also capable to support anyone else. Um, been with Berkeley for almost uh, a year and uh, very excited to do this uh, to do this workshop, which we've done. We did it in the spring and we're excited to now do it virtually uh, in the fall. So Ravel, I'll turn it over to you to introduce yourself and give some logistics and then kick it off. Sounds good. Thanks, Mike. Hi, everyone. My name's Ravel. I'm also assistant director in the Career Center for Engineering and Physical Sciences. What is the purpose of a cover letter? Why do we write these? So similar to a resume, its main job is to get your foot in the door, to get you an interview. So all of the areas on the cover letter should market you as the best fit for that job based on your interest in the company and the relevant skills that you have. So you want your cover letter to get noticed and quickly because often recruiters and hiring managers are only going to spend a few seconds looking at your cover letter before they decide whether or not to move you forward in the process. So cover letter trends, these are some things that we see commonly in cover letters nowadays. Um, you wanna be really targeted and tailored with your approach for each company and position. You always wanna to stick to what's relevant to them based on the job or internship description and even mirror the language or the keywords in those descriptions. You want to address the cover letter to the appropriate hiring manager or recruiter as much as you can find who that person is who's hiring for that role. And then a trend right now is to use a cover letter to really highlight what are the top skills that make you a good fit for that position. And you can think of your resume as like an overview of all of the relevant skills and experience that you have. And your cover letter is like a snapshot of those top skills that you're gonna to bring to the table. So right now you can even use bullet points or skill headings. This is becoming more common just to make it really clear and concise um, in your cover letter about what are the skills you're gonna bring. And of course, I'll show an example later on what that looks like. And then generally you wanna keep your formatting very simple and clean. Don't use any templates, um, avoid things like tables or columns, pictures or graphics, just because when you upload your, res your cover letter, excuse me, online, sometimes these things can throw off um, an applicant tracking system that a company uses, and it may not be able to read the cover letter correctly. So just keep your formatting very simple if you're uploading it. All right, so to prepare to write your cover letter, as I mentioned, you're going to research the company or organization, get a sense for what, what's gonna be relevant to this particular company and the specific role. So analyze the job description and identify what are the top skills needed for the job. So you're gonna to wanna to look at what are the top technical skills. Um, if you're software engineering, of course, you know, what are the top programming languages that they want you to be familiar with? Um, maybe dan data analytical tools, whatever the technical skills are for the job, you wanna mention a couple of those in your cover letter that you have, as well as soft skills, maybe communication, collaboration, teamwork. These are really common, especially for internships where they wanna see examples of how you've used those soft skills in the past. And then think through your experience. Um, you're gonna wanna have a little more in-depth stories, right? In your cover letter than you would on your resume. You can definitely emulate some of the same things in your resume, but in your cover letter, you're gonna go into more detail on what was that experience like? Um, and then what were the outcomes? So always focus on what's the value you can bring and what you can contribute to that company or organization. And once again, if you just entered the room, welcome. Um, put your questions in the chat. Uh, my colleague Mike is receiving those questions. Okay, so this is the basic heading on your cover letter. You wanna have your name, contact information, just like your resume. And it's great if you format it consistently with your resume. You're going to have the date that you wrote your letter, 
the employer's contact info. Yes, that includes an address for the company. And direct your letter to the specific person if you can. If you can't find a specific person, you can put dear hiring manager, dear hiring committee, or something a little more general. So at this point, why don't we take some questions? Um, feel free to put some in the chat just based on any of the information I've shared so far or about how you can find a recruiter or hiring manager. And then Mike, if there are any questions you think we should address right now, yeah, please let me know. Uh, yeah, we had a good question come in. Uh, can you pick any recruiter from the company? How do you know which one will read your cover letter specifically? Yeah, so generally speaking, you know, companies are going to have a specific recruiter for, for you know, each position. Um, and when it's a larger company, it can be difficult to find the appropriate person, especially if their handshake um, profile or their LinkedIn profile has several recruiters listed that are specific for university recruiting. Um, so the handshake profile can definitely be your first step, right? They, they will put recruiters in there um, specific for you all at Berkeley. So check that first. If you can't find the contact information attached to a person's name and handshake, then try to reach out to them on LinkedIn. As long as you have the name, that's totally okay to do that. But let's say you can't find that specific person for university recruiting at Berkeley maybe there's several university recruiters in their LinkedIn profile, go ahead and reach out to all of them. Just kind of craft a really short uniform message. You could even include a statement that says, I would like to discuss my qualifications for this position. Could I schedule a time with you or is there another person I should reach out to and then see if they respond with the appropriate person. But you could also contact the company directly and ask. So if the company's big enough, they'll have a human resources department and you can contact that department and ask who the recruiter or hiring manager is for the specific position that you're interested in and see if you can get their contact info that way. Um, yeah, I hope that helps. Sometimes it takes a little digging, so you may not wanna do this every time, but for the positions you're really interested in, it can really help to have a specific person to reach out to. Any other questions, Mike? Um, yep. Uh, if you can't find the name anywhere, should I say to whom it may concern? Yeah, that's totally okay to keep it general to who it may to whom it may concern or hiring manager, dear hiring committee, anything like that is okay. Um, and then one regarding probably the, the the address details. Should we also add our LinkedIn link to our cover letter? Add your LinkedIn link to your cover letter. Sure. Yeah, at the top here, um, where you've got your contact information, that can look the exact same as your resume. In fact, I would encourage you to format things the same, um, just for consistency. Um, I think that answer, well, one of the questions was, what about addressing it to the company name? So is it, you know, to whom, to whom it may concern versus the company name, any preference there? Hmm. Um, I don't think there would, yeah, be a preference as far as like recruiters are concerned. If you're just addressing it generally, um, then that works. Yeah, if you can't find a specific person, any general statement should be fine. So the introduction paragraph, um, you want to state the position you are applying for and then how you found out about it. So if you were referred by someone, you want to put that person here as well. Maybe you met a recruiter at a career fair or another event, then you can state that in this first paragraph. You'll want to briefly explain why you are interested in the position and company. And then make a generalized statement summarizing what qualifies you most for the job. So let's look at an example here. I'm applying for a mechanical engineering summer internship at Rexnord Industries. It was a pleasure to meet you at the UC Berkeley STEM career fair last week. I'm excited about this opportunity to learn technical business and leadership skills 
from a company that is a global leader in industrial chain manufacturing. In this letter, I will describe how my mechanical aptitude, problem solving skills, and ability to work in cross-functional teams make me an excellent fit for the internship position. So as you can see, they're being clear right away in the beginning, the specific position they're applying for. In this case, this person is addressing it to Mr. Smith and they met them at the career fair. And then they go into a little bit about the company itself. What is it about the company that interests them? In this particular case, it's that this company is a global leader in the, in the particular industry that the student's interested in. And then they give a transition sentence, um, basically saying, you know, this is what I'm going to talk about in this letter. Um, this is, these are the specific skills that they're going to discuss um, that are relevant to this internship opportunity. And then for your body paragraphs, you're going to want to build a connection between that company's needs and then your background. So once again, you're going to provide specific examples of your skills and you can pull this from anywhere in your experience, coursework, projects, internships, etc. So what matters more than anything is that you've got the relevant skills where you have gathered those skills, the context doesn't matter as much as that you have the skills. So while it's great if your context is relevant, it doesn't necessarily need to be um, if you used similar technical or soft skills elsewhere. So you're going to expand on your experiences from your resume um, and you can use bullet points or skill headings to do this if you'd like. So let's take a look at an example. Before we dive into that, actually, <laughs> let's talk about the SAR method. So this is how you're going to describe your examples. Um, so the SAR method is something that we recommend. You don't have to use this method. There's lots of different story models out there. Um, I recommend this one just because it's what recruiters have told me that they kind of base their interview questions off of. So I know that they're specifically looking for these things um, when students describe their experience. But essentially what it means is you're going to brief, briefly describe the situation or the context in which you used a relevant skill. Then you want to describe actions that you took to exhibit the, the skill. And then what were the results of your actions? That is, you know, what is the achievement that you had or what is the impact that you made um, using that skill? So these stories should be really short, concise, but specific. And then you do want to quantify any results of your actions if you can. Um, so let's look at the examples now and then hopefully all this will come together. So this is the body of the cover letter. And as you can see, there's skill headings here and then examples of how the student used these skills in the past. And you can go ahead and use headings like this if you want. Um, maybe even bullet points. The reason why there's kind of a trend towards these headings or bullet points is it just makes it so much easier to read. When a recruiter looks at your cover letter, these headings are likely going to be the first thing they see as it'll draw their eye directly down to them, um, which can be good because right away they're going to see, oh, you know, this student has the skills I'm looking for. So it could entice them to read more. Um, so for example, under mechanical aptitude, the student writes, I have experience using CNC programs, AutoCAD, SolidWorks, and other mechanical tools, equipment, and processes. Using these skills, I have designed various projects for courses and student clubs. An electrical solar powered vehicle, a high speed rail transport, aircraft components, and a high rise waste vent and storm drain system. My mechanical aptitude has led to many positive results with my work including winning first place at the Formula Sun Grand Prix 2017 American Solar Challenge. So as you can see, this particular example is actually across the student's experience, but the situation is classroom projects. That's where the student has gained these technical skills. And then the actions the student took were basically designing 
these different, um, these different things. And then the results are kind of generalized, you know, many positive results of my work, but then the specific results of winning first place in that challenge. Um, so you can keep it like general across your experience if you'd like, or you can get more specific to like one example. Um, so the problem solving one would be a good example in that regard where the situation is the student was a product design intern and used problem solving skills. The specific action the student took was analyzed and resolved the buzz budgetary issues in their internship. And then the results or the impact was saving the company 12% on project costs in comparison to the previous year. So as you can see, these are, these are specific, um, but they're really concise, right? You don't have to go into like a whole essay of information. Um, you can keep it really brief as long as you're kind of getting these elements across in some way. Okay, so generally speaking, when you're choosing these skills, if you'd like to do these skill headings, I would recommend you want to have a mixture of technical and soft skills, more so for internships. Um, however, it really just depends on the position, right? If the position is very technical, then keep it to technical skills. Um, you just have to kind of gauge on the way that they're writing the description. You know, what are the top skills they're looking for? And then try to do a mixture of those um, if you can. Okay. Let's move on to the closing paragraph. So this is where you're going to re-emphasize your interests and skills you're going to maybe discuss additional qualities or your passion or motivation to succeed and contribute in the company. And then you want to express interest in an interview or to discuss your qualifications further and then thank the employer um, for considering or for their time. So let's take a look at an example. So this student wrote, in addition to possessing the skills listed above, I am a self-starter with a passion for learning new and innovative business practices. I attached my resume for your review and look forward to sharing more of my qualifications for the internship and an interview. Thank you for your consideration. So they have this nice transition sentence here where they add in a couple more attributes that they have. Um, self-starter, passion for learning new and innovative business practices. And that was directly from the job description. So, there, they were just a couple more attributes that weren't necessarily the top skills they were looking for, but the student had them. So they wanted to make sure they included it in the cover letter. And then they're just wrapping it up. They're dropping the word interview because that's the goal, right? For the next step and thanking the employer. Okay, so that's my spiel on what to include in the cover letter. And then I'm just going to cover some additional tips here. So you definitely want to keep your letter to one page. Don't go over that. The font style of your resume um, and cover letter should be the same. So once again, consistency is great with your resume. And then you're going to save the document um, as a PDF and, you know, keep the name relatively simple. Include your name and cover letter, for example, just so it's easy for the employer to find later if they save it and proofread. Definitely make sure you're catching any grammar errors, typos, and all of that. Okay, there we go. Back to you, Mike. All right, okay. Thanks, Shrevee. So in a second, we'll, um, we'll cover some of the questions that have come through. Uh, we have a few, but definitely we'll have time to answer some more. So please uh, encourage uh, everyone if you have questions, either just based on some of the content that Rave has shared, or you know if you heard a you, you heard a rumor or heard a myth, like this is the place to to get that myth either confirmed uh, or denied. So um, definitely you know, don't leave. We don't want you to leave in the session with any questions. Um, if you have any follow up questions uh, from this, or if you specifically want to um, 
do uh, review a cover letter. Um, we have a link uh, there, but you can just navigate to Handshake to book a 30 minute career counseling appointment uh, on Handshake. Um, it's very simple to do. We have availability three weeks out. So even if you cannot find something uh, immediately, you probably be able to find something again within, the, within three weeks. If you do have an immediate concern or, or maybe there's an urgency, like you have a deadline approaching, we also have our peer advisors. Uh, they do drop-in hours uh, from Monday to Friday, 12 to 4. And there, again, the link there is in the slides, but it's also on our website. The peer advisors are also good for uh, freshmen. Um, in case you didn't know, first semester, in first semester freshmen, they cannot book a 30-minute career counseling appointment with us, um, but they will be able to meet with the career advisor. And then um, from the spring semester, they will be able to book a 30-minute appointment with us. Um, yeah, and happy to work with students on cover letter, but also uh, resume, interviewing, um, offer negotiation, or just kind of general, like, I'm not sure what I do. I need, a, like, I need somebody to talk to uh, about like, some career decisions. We're happy to, to help you with that. Um, Rebe, was there anything else that I wanted to cover before we get to the q and A? I I think that's it. Yeah, let's dive into the Q&A. Okay. Um, first one, how important is the cover letter for tech companies? Is it different versus other traditional companies? So from what I've seen, um, the cover letter is less important for tech companies. Um, the larger tech companies will often just want a resume uploaded but it really just depends. Sometimes companies um, will have it optional, in which case I definitely encourage you to upload one because it just helps hone in why you're a good fit, why you're interested. Um, but yeah, even if it's not required, but you want to reach out directly to a recruiter or hiring manager, you could attach it to the email that you send. So I would recommend, you know, for the positions you're really interested in, um, if you can get a direct person to reach out to, craft a cover letter um, along with your resume. But otherwise, yeah, you don't need to if it's not required. In fact, yeah, if they don't ask for it, definitely don't include it. Just submit your resume. Yeah, something I'd add to that is sometimes if you apply on these <clears throat> platforms, they'll ask you to submit a resume and then there may be like a box that says, you know, send a message to the hiring manager which is in essence, it's almost like a cover letter. You probably wouldn't do the, the one page, you know, cut and paste, but definitely use the box as an opportunity just to say more about your skills. Any, anytime there's something in the application process that helps you stand out from everyone else to kind of give other reasons why you're a good fit to take advantage of them. Um, and there was a question related, that kind of related to what you just said about the email is, if someone asked me to email my resume directly to them, should I include a cover letter like, as an attachment or should I use the body of the email to, uh, as the cover letter? Hmm. So I think, you know, that, that is up to you, but what I would suggest is keep your email message brief and then attach the cover letter if they want to read more. Um, generally people don't like to get really long emails. I avoid them if I get them. <laughs> I might save them for later. So I think it's good to just keep the message brief um, and then invite them to read the letter that you attach. What about you, Mike? Uh, yeah, I couldn't agree more. I think that's a, that's a great suggestion, yeah. Cool. Um, if I'm applying to mostly the same roles, for example, software engineering, does it make sense that my cover letters will look more similar than different? Hmm more simple than what no more similar than different so with oh, one, gotcha. does it make sense that they'll start to look the same oh, yeah i think it would make sense. um yeah for a lot of software engineering positions employers are looking for similar skills right so yeah if you if you find an employer for example or two employers right who really want you to be proficient in python then you're probably going to include the same example about how you used python in the past and the impact that you made um, but really just make sure that you're paying attention to each job description though, to ensure that you're choosing the top skills that are relevant. Um, I heard that files should be, so this is a question, this isn't me. I heard the files should be submitted as, a, as Word because some um, applicant tracking systems cannot process PDFs. Yeah, I heard that too. Um, I think at this point though, majority 
can process PDFs and I would recommend uploading a PDF because you wouldn't want a recruiter with a Mac to be unable to, un to open that Word document. Um, I think, yeah, when it comes to Word documents, that might be more so like maybe for some government organizations who have really old applicant tracking systems. But I think at this point, they should all be able to read PDFs. Um, what do you think, Mike? Yeah, I agree. I think we've heard from recruiters that they, you know, I think PDF is best. And often the, in the instructions, it'll say mm -hmm. what format to use. So make sure to kind of to follow the instructions in the application process. If it does say, you know, PDF, make sure to do that. For sure. Um, next one, can you elaborate a little more on making a cover this specific role or company? I heard people usually write general ones. Elaborate more on making one specific. So, yeah, you know, I think we covered um, how to do that, right? You, you want to definitely find what are the specific technical and soft skills needed for this position and then make it really clear in your cover letter that you are going to describe how you have relevant skills. Go ahead and make it really clear. You can say, what I see in your job description is, or what I think is important for this role based on the job description even, um, that's okay. They want to know that you have read what they're looking for and are, and are paying attention to that. So yeah, definitely tailor it um, as much as you can to that specific position. Yeah, another way to do that is to go beyond the job description and to do some research and to see what is the mission or the company values, core values of that organization. If you see a connection there, establish that in the cover letter. You know. Like I, you know, something that draws me to Salesforce is their, you know, commitment to diversity and, you know, internal growth. And this is a strong reason why I want to work there, you know. So often those are unique to different companies. So that's a way to establish the cover letter as unique too. Definitely. Yeah, that's a good thing to put like in the beginning or end of your letter. Yeah. yeah. Um, so here's one, if my background or major doesn't perfectly align with the profile of the company, what the profile of the company is looking for, is it helpful to just talk about why I'm passionate about the field or position in detail in a storytelling style, or should I stick to my STEM skills? Hmm. So I guess it kind of depends, right? Like even if you haven't had like a specific title that's similar to what they're hiring for or what you're applying for, you probably still have skills that are relevant, right? Maybe they just don't match the specific context exactly, but that's okay. What's more important when you give your examples is to go into detail on the skill you exhibited, not so much the context in which you received it. So. Um, I would say try as much as you can to focus on those skills that you have that are relevant. Um, but yes, the cover letter is a place for you to go into detail as well on your passions. How is that aligned with the company or how is the company aligned with your long term career goals. Um, so something that students do right if maybe they're writing an example of a skill that they used, but it's not really clear how it relates it's okay to just make it really clear to be like, I would use this skill in this position in this way. And you can even state that um, just to hone it in how it's relevant. Um, yeah, I think that's a great way. I was going to say same thing. I say both, you know, establish, establish connection to the role. And like you said, Reve, identify what are the transferable skills necessary for success. So what, what skills are necessary for success in this role? How have you demonstrated those same skills? Again, maybe in, different, in a different context, but the same core skill, how have you demonstrated that in your previous roles, regardless of what it is? For sure. You're kind of going in and out with sound there, Mike. Just a heads up. <laughs> All right. Okay. Just let me know if you need me to repeat. Okay. Um, next question. Can you talk more about soft skills? Sure. So soft skills are basically skills that you can use in any position. Um, another way to put it is transferable skills like Mike mentioned. So these are skills like teamwork, collaboration, communication, um, interpersonal skills, people skills. So a lot of internships, even if they're in tech companies um, for technical 
titles like data analyst or software engineer, they will often emphasize the soft skills for internships because employers understand you're going to get those technical skills while you're there. So they want to make sure you have the capacity to learn through communication, collaboration, and that sort of thing. Um, so some companies, as you'll see when you're searching for internships, will actually prefer those soft skills over technical skills sometimes. It just depends on the role. Um, so you all are gaining those soft skills, right? Every single day in the classroom, any roles that you've had previously, uh, whether they're volunteer world roles or work roles, you all have examples that you can draw from for those particular skills. Um, and we'd be happy to help you with that in an appointment to determine what are the strongest examples that you have in that regard. Another question. Uh when a quick apply option is available, like on Handshake, uh, where only the resume is sent through, should you still send a cover letter? And if so, how? Hmm, quick apply option on Handshake. So, yeah, if there's not a place to upload it when you're applying on Handshake, then then the only way you really have to submit it is maybe if you're also going to apply on like the company website, for example, and they want you to upload it there, which you could do. You can apply on both um, for the same position. Or if you're planning to reach out directly to a recruiter, then you could attach it to that email. Um, but otherwise, yeah, if there's not a place to upload it when you're doing the quick quick apply, excuse me, then I wouldn't worry about it on Handshake. Yeah, I agree. You know, if they sometimes they don't they don't want a cover letter and they make it very difficult for you to submit. I have heard of students that, you know, when they create a resume, will essentially create a two-page resume and they'll use the second page as a chance to send in a cover letter. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I think that one it's high risk, high reward. You know, somebody could then just disregard it or maybe think that you weren't following the um, following the instructions. Um, mm -hmm. You know, like I said, like I mentioned with that, that little box earlier where you can say more, sometimes that's also, you can, up, you can upload supporting documents and that could, you could, you could use that, interpret that as a cover letter too. Um, you know, I feel like cover letters are the kind of thing where if you submit one, the worst that could happen is just, it just gets ignored. It's not really going to do any damage, but not submitting one when someone really wanted to see one, that, that hurts you more. So here's one. Um, if I know somebody in the company, should I mention their name in the letter? Yeah, you could. Um, I guess it depends on how you know them, though. If, you know, it's great if you met them in some sort of professional capacity at an event or something. Um, or if you're maybe someone that you've connected with who agreed to be a referral for you or a reference for you then that's great. Um, if it's more so just a friend, um, I don't know if that would be so wise to mention because you're going to want to say how you know that person. Um, yeah, do you have any suggestions, Mike? Yeah, I think that's fine. I, I'm also for like mentioning somebody's name, especially if they're in a position where they can maybe advocate for you or um, if potentially you know, the recruiter would come to them later to, to ask about or application, um, you know, I think it's just appropriate to, to ask the person that you're going to mention beforehand, um, even regardless of how well you know them. I think, you know, just to get the permission so that in case, you know, a recruiter does come to them, it's not by surprise. Um, and at a minimum, I'd say if you know somebody in the company, you, you know, even if you choose not to mention the name in the cover letter, that's a, that's a networking opportunity. You want to make sure that that person is advocating for you from within the company. So, even if it's as simple as maybe you didn't mention them in the cover letter and then you submit your application, send that person an email or contact them through LinkedIn just to, just to say that you have, you know, applied for this role at their company um, because they then, they may choose to then be like, okay, well, I'm going to, you know, get hold of the recruiter and ask them to look out for your application. So knowing them in the company is really, really important. 
like you mentioned, Rebe, it does matter. It does matter how well you know them, and the stronger the relationship, then the stronger the the kind of the, the degree that you should leverage them. Um, uh, so you mentioned the length of one page for a cover letter. With which font size should it be, and how much spacing? Uh, I know the question is asking, could you give more of a word count, which I know is a hard one to answer, but when it comes to like font size and, and line spacing, you can help with that. Um, let's see. So with font, any font, I guess, would work. I would, well, you want to use kind of common ones, right? Because if you're uploading it online, sometimes applicant tracking systems may have a hard time reading really fancy fonts. So maybe stick to like Times New Roman or Arial or something very common. Um, and then your font size should be 11. That's ideal. Maybe 10 at the smallest, but for readability, you don't want to go lower than that. I would say for spacing, um, you could keep it to one point. That would work out fine. Um, double spacing, I think, would look a little weird but maybe in between that would be okay. Um, and then, yeah, you want to definitely, you know, have space at the top, right, for your contact info, the companies, the date, and, you know, what we, what we showed you in the presentation. So the blocks of text themselves will probably take up more like two-thirds of the page. Yeah, any other thoughts, Mike? Uh, I think that's, yeah, that sounds about right. You know, just keep it, keep it standard, keep it traditional. Don't try to get too, you know, too original or cute. I think you just want to keep, keep it very traditional. Um, question, where can we find uh, sample cover letters? Oh, great question. Um, so we do have a website with those. Mike, are you able to grab that? It's a little hard for me while I'm sharing the screen. I will. Yeah, let me do that. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah, so we have a, a website with both resume and sample, or sorry, um, sample resume and cover letters. Yeah, I'll drop it into the chat. Okay, great. Um, Mike said he's going to drop the link in the chat for you all. Um, do we have the chat set to everyone at the moment? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, and then one other question. Um, I was told to include my contact details throughout the cover letter. Is that true? To include your contact details throughout the cover letter. Um, it's not super necessary if you're going to have your contact info at the top in a in a header. Um, but you could, I would say, at the bottom when you're wrapping up the cover letter, in addition to having it in your header, if you'd like, you could say something at the end like, you know, feel free to reach out to me with any questions or you can contact me to schedule an interview at this, you know, email or this phone number. Um, but it's not necessary to include it if you've got it in your heading. Um, and I just put the, the link to um, kind of a, it's a workbook for resumes. It has example resumes and cover letters. Um, cool, thanks. Another question, should we include references at the bottom of the cover letter? No, um, your references should be in a separate page and only give it to the employer if they ask for it. Um, yep, I agree. Um, references, it's a kind of a different area, but um, you don't need to provide them ahead of time until they ask them. Um, quick note on references though, you know, definitely line them up when you start your job search, you know, you know contact them, reach out to them, ask them to be a reference, uh, get their updated contact details, um, they need to know that you're looking so in case they do get a phone call that they pick up um, and then your references are a mix of you know ideally it could be a professor it could be an internship supervisor it can be a colleague that you work with um, if you don't have any of those you can do 
you could do family friends, but try and keep it uh, professional or somebody that can comment on your on your kind of work ethic and work background. Um, and um, yeah, just definitely ask them ahead of time. I think is just really important. Um, the question I kind of skipped over because it was more around resumes, but um, this is one of the last questions. Again, to students, if you want, if you have any other questions, put them in the chat. But I'll ask this one again. It's more resume focused. Um, can my resume be two pages for the sake of it being more readable and including more qualifications? Hmm. So generally speaking, for industry positions, you're going to want to keep it to one page. I would say the exception to that is if you've already had several years of work experience, or maybe you're a graduate student and you've got, you know, just more years under your belt. But if you're an undergrad, definitely keep it to one page. Um, and we can help you with that, right, in a resume review, like removing things that could be irrelevant. Um, however, if it's an academic position, um, then you can have what's considered a curriculum vitae where you're going to have more information than the resume and it can be two pages. Um, so if you're applying to like research roles in academia, teaching roles or grad school, then you can have a two page resume or curriculum vitae. I think to add, Dave, I agree. Uh, cool. And then, yeah, we might be able to take, I'd like to use the last five minutes for the post survey, Mike. Okay, yeah. So you take like yeah, one more question if there is one. Yeah, and just to say any, any questions, if you think of any questions later, um, if you feel free to email us directly or, you know, just book a 30 minute appointment, it doesn't hurt to talk about your question. And then we can also look at, you know, resume, LinkedIn profile, things like that. Thanks again, everyone. We're going to close the workshop at this point. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye.